We all know someone experiencing substance abuse. Celebrities, friends, family. Going through substance abuse is a wilderness. Substance abuse can be defined as a pattern of harmful use of any substance for mood-altering purposes. This can include abuse from prescription, over-the-counter drugs, alcohol, and illegal drugs like cocaine and marijuana. When I was in high school, my two best friends didn't know it at the time, but they wound up being gay. And when I was best friends with them, and we, we had the group, we were the, the, three, some, the three musketeers. Um, they were going through the process of discovering that and struggling with society's pressures on them and their family pressures. Um, people were very unkind in school, especially towards one of my friends, friend because he was very infeminate in the way that he acted. And everybody knew that they, they thought that they could define him, they thought that they knew what he was about when he was trying to discover himself, really what was going on inside of him. Um, but my other friend Kevin was more masculine and was able to go under the radar a little bit more. But he was the one that was actually coming to terms with his sexuality much more quickly. And he got into drug and alcohol abuse and it completely destroyed his life, um, completely took over, grades went down, everything else. And he actually wound up committing suicide when he was about 21. He jumped off a, a hotel building, a, kind of an apartment that he had been staying in that was really a hotel room. Um, he went up to the roof and jumped off when he was high. So they arrived at the other side of the lake in the region of Gerasenes. When Jesus climbed out of the boat, a man possessed by an evil spirit came out from a cemetery to meet him. This man lived among the burial caves and could no longer be restrained, even with a chain. Whenever he was put into chains and shackles, as he often was, he snapped at the chains from his wrists and smashed the shackles. No one was strong enough to subdue him. Day and night he wandered among the burial caves and in the hills, howling and cutting himself with sharp stones. Some signs of someone who has a substance abuse problem are as follows. Signs in behavior, changed in uncharacteristic or impulsive manners, secretive about behavior or whereabouts, increasing financial problems, and individuals may borrow or even steal money from family or friends. Mental indicators are difficulty in concentrating or doing work, they experience blackouts, and they may make inappropriate or unreasonable choices. Physical and emotional indicators are smell or appearance of substance on the person, incoherent communication, missing work and often offering excuses, burn and needle marks on the physical person, or a physical weight loss. Hi, she was 10 years old when she, uh, first time she lit up a cigarette. She was my sister, and uh, she, um, that, that was her beginning of her little path to, I guess, to destruction. Um, when she was about 14, she got involved with a lot of gangs. Uh, and uh, a lot of this had to do with my brother's death. My brother died uh, when she was about 14 years old. And so it affected her a lot. She dove into drugs and uh, uh, stuff. Her, her drug of choice was uh, methamphetamines. Uh, she uh, did crystal meth a lot. And, uh, and, uh, she got involved with a lot of the wrong people, including members of the, of the neo-Nazi skinheads. She, was, she, she never herself was racist, but in order to, uh, you know, get drugs, she hung around the wrong people. And it was about the time she was uh, 18 years old that she uh, realized that, that she had ruined her life. She, she was a super genius when she was younger, had IQ about 130. And by the time she was 18, it hurt just to think because she'd done so many drugs. And she was sitting in her in the room with her, uh, her best friend. They were high on marijuana, and which is you know a small drug for them. And they, uh, um, she realized that she needed to quit, and she drove 18 hours upon her parents. She 
came to the front door in tears and said, you know, Mom, Dad, I'm sorry for him. What you feel like? And uh, over the next three years, she uh, struggled with it. You know, so she always struggled with marijuana. You know, she gave up methamphetamines completely at 18. But, uh, and, um, but when she met her husband, she met her husband when she was 20, when she was 21. And she got pregnant almost the next year. And that's when she completely gave up everything. And, uh, When Jesus was still some distance away, the man saw him, ran to meet him, and bowed low before him. With a shriek he screamed, Why are you interfering with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? In the, in the name of God, I beg you, don't torture me. For Jesus had already said to the spirit, Come out of the man, you evil spirit. Then Jesus demanded, What is your name? And he, and he replied, My name is Legion, because there are many of us inside of this, this man. Then the evil spirits begged him again and again not to send them to some distant place. There happened to be a large herd of pigs feeding on the hillside nearby. Send us into those pigs, the, the spirits begged. Let us enter them. So Jesus gave them permission. The spirits came out of the man and entered the pigs, and, then, and the entire herd of 2,000 pigs plunged down the steep hillside into the lake and drowned in the water. So this um, all started when a cousin of mine passed away um, unexpectedly. His brother and he were very close. Um, growing up, they were all that each other had because their parents were um, on the road or at work most of the time, so they had to depend on one another. So when Lynn passed away, Aaron had nothing. So he found um, help in drugs and abusing them and for many years he did pretty much anything you can name. Um, found a girlfriend and she also was an abuser. Um, they moved in together and got engaged. Um, he had OD'd a few times but um, fortunately had survived from them uh, until one day my cousin Adam had gone to get him from work, Aaron that is, and he would not wake up. He was still breathing, um, but was still sleeping. So his fiance told um, Adam, my cousin, to go ahead to work and that she would wake Aaron up and make certain he got to work on time. Well, Adam went to work, but Aaron never showed up. So Adam called my aunt and uncle and told them that they should probably go check on Aaron to make certain that he was okay. By the time they got down to Aaron's house, uh, Aaron was dead. They called, you know, 911 and had people come over as soon as possible, but they were unable to revive him. Uh, the reason that Aaron's fiance Mary had not called anyone was because she was afraid that if someone were to come into their house, they would find the drugs. And also probably because she was high and thought that it was more important to get a cup of coffee and watch her talk shows rather than call for help. So in the time that she got a cup of coffee and watched a talk show, she could have saved Aaron's life, but probably was not fully aware that that was what was going on. It's just a story of substance abuse and how it turns to the worst. The herdsmen fled to the nearby town and the surrounding countryside, spreading the news as they ran. People rushed out to see what had happened. A crowd soon gathered around Jesus, and they saw the man who had been possessed by the legion of the demons. He was sitting there fully clothed and perfectly sane, and they were all afraid. Then those who had seen what happened told the others about the demon-possessed man and the pigs, and the crowd began pleading with Jesus to go away and leave them alone. As Jesus was getting into the boat, the man who had been demon-possessed begged to go with him. But Jesus said, No, go home to your family and tell them everything the Lord has done for you and how merciful he has been. So the man started off to visit the ten towns of that region and began to proclaim the great things Jesus had done for him. And everyone was amazed at what he told them. Community is a very important aspect to substance abuse recovery. Uh, people that have a community or accountability group, such as AA or Narcotics Anonymous, are twice as 
twice as more likely to succeed um, in being 100% uh, drug-free after a five-year period. Um, I had a cousin. Um, it's so sad I don't know much about him. I know he was uh, quite a few years older than, uh, than um, I was. Um, he got involved in drugs. And the thing is, as a family, we never really talked about it. So all I knew is that he struggled with drugs. I don't really know what kind or, you know, if he struggled with alcohol or prescription drugs. And we just never really talked about it as a family. And the last I heard, um, a couple years ago, he passed away. But we weren't really told if he passed away because of a drug overdose or, you know, what the circumstances of um, surrounding his death were. Um, there was issues. Um, his parents are divorced, and there were issues on where he was going to be buried. And, you know, like, I think his mother didn't really want to acknowledge the death. And I, and I think his father wanted to do, like, a memorial service. And there was just all this stuff going on. But still, I just feel like, and I didn't really grow up with this person, but I just thought it was really sad that as a family we didn't really you know, talk about it or, you know, discuss it. We just, I just knew of him as my cousin with the drug problem. As Christians, we are called to help those who are in need. Here are some things you can do to help someone who is struggling with substance abuse. Number one, talk and be open about the reality of substance abuse. Number two, know the signs of substance abuse. Number three, seek resources such as drug and alcohol treatment programs. Number four, be supportive. And finally, number five, seek spiritual guidance.